Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back with round 6 of season 6 of the F1 2020 My Team Career Mode. Yes, today we're here back ready for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. It does officially mean uh, we've caught up with the real life F1 season as well. But heading into this weekend, even more upgrades on the car. We are now third best again in the world of Formula 1. They're just now behind Alpha Tauri and Mercedes, who are, of course, our big two target rivals at this early stage of the year. But if you did miss out on yesterday's video from the Monaco Grand Prix, I would definitely, definitely recommend going back and checking it out. Like I said, more and more upgrades going on the car over the last couple of weeks means, yeah, we have now moved ourselves up in to P3 overall. But unfortunately, because of that, we're going to have to take some grid penalties this weekend. We're going to put a completely fresh engine in the back of the car. Obviously, we've got through all of the aero circuits. We head to, obviously, a lot more of the power-orientated tracks over the next few weeks in this series. So we're just going to start from the back here in Baku. Hopefully, obviously, we can try and recover our way up towards the front of the order nonetheless. But yeah, let's dive in then here ready for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Good afternoon and welcome to Baku. This was the arena, if you think back to 2017, of one of the most eventful races of modern history, with controversy behind the safety car, last second overtakes, and a historic podium for Williams and for Lance Stroll. So let's find out what lies in store for us this year. It's time for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. It's 3.7 miles around a lap of Baku City Circuit then, with seven rights and 13 lefts, giving us a total of 20 corners. Watch out for the safety car today. Incidents are already common on this circuit and the wet conditions will only make things worse, particularly through the incredibly narrow Turn 8. A warm welcome to Anthony Davidson, who's beside me in the commentary box today. Let's talk about Mr. Monaco. What do you make of their performance so far this season? They've been avoiding mistakes and have had solid pace, so it's been a good season so far, but whether they can keep that up long term remains to be seen. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. George Russell will begin today's event from pole position, with Charles Leclerc alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Kvyat, Stroll, Pierre Gasly and Hamilton, Perez, Albon, Joe and Carlos Sainz, Ocon, Verstappen, Lando Norris and Aitken, Raikkonen, Latifi, Antonio Giovinazzi and Jordan King. Matsushita, Magnussen, De Vries, and Mr. Monaco. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track and get this Grand Prix underway. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. Right, well, here we are then, ready on the grid for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Not quite where I wanted to start this one, and the wet race ahead of us as well is certainly going to make things very, very difficult indeed. Trying to just keep it on the island I think is going to be critical today for some success, but the team predicting a one-stop strategy over the course of today's Grand Prix. Like we said, starting P22 though, I just want to dive right in here for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Then waiting on those five red lights, and it is lights out, and away we go, off to a good start. We'll split the Haas as we head down towards turn one. Just nice and easy on the brakes. Max Rashita going for a big old move down towards the first quarter there. He's actually pulled it off straight into P14 for Nobuhari. Max Rashita here, but of course, yeah, didn't get much running in in qualifying and practice, of course. Knowing we were going to be starting at the back. We got yellow flags out. Not too sure what that's all about. So, yeah, not the most confident with this car track so far. But if Charles Leclerc's pace is real, maybe actually now we've got a car that can actually fight for Grand Prix once again over the rest of this year. Giovinazzi thinking about going for a move down in towards turn three, but thinks better of it this time round as we head down through the next couple of corners on this open lap. Just trying to keep it nice, clean and tidy at the start of this Grand Prix. Don't want to do anything stupid in the early stages. So easy just to have a slip up around this track. Obviously not much downforce on the cars, but in these wet, slippery conditions there is all. We just get a little bit over the curbs. Accidentally give Giovinazzi a bit of a squeeze down in towards the next corner. Oh, he puts me in the wall. This is getting very, very scrappy with Antonio Giovinazzi at the start of this Grand Prix. We have to bail out of that. Oh, huge amount of understeer as we head in towards the castle section. But we do somehow survive. And we're still up into P19 off the start. Oh, we got yellow flags out already as we come towards the end of lap two there. I think it's one of the Haas cars. It must be Nick DeFries 
dropping to the wayside in this Grand Prix and the third Ferrari power unit failure in just two Grand Prix. Not what those guys need at this stage of the year. None of the Ferrari power teams doing very well in the championship. Eighth, tenth and eleventh I want to say as we've got a safety car in this Grand Prix. Not really going to make much difference to us but it is going to bunch up the field a bit. Going ready to go green then once again here from the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And this time round, we're going to get a pretty good restart as we head back down towards turn one. Around the outside of Giovinazzi. Oh, big old brake check there from Nicholas Latifi. Everyone a lot earlier on the anchors than I thought they would be through turn one. And despite locking up both front wheels, we do get out of that. And we do get around Antonio Giovinazzi. No idea why we've had so many wet races at the start of the year so far. It has been insane. That's our third wet Grand Prix in just six races as well. This really has been a tough challenge on F1 2021. Oh, F1 2020 even. 2021, of course, just around the corner. But, yeah, we're now up into P18 then of the Grand Prix once more. Can we try and line up a move on the Tifi? Seems like the AI pretty quick around here, though, in these wet conditions. Either that or I'm just not that confident so far. I think points should definitely still be on the cards today. Oh, we thought about it. We thought about it there on Latifi. Just made him second-guess himself. But yeah, points still should definitely be on the cards. But this one might be a case of damage limitation to George Russell. Let's see then if this time around we can try and get a good run on Nicholas Latifi out of the final couple of corners. Really try and open up the track width through here and then get on the power as early as you can. Activate the ERS as well. So we do the drag race back down towards turn one there. Russell, new fastest lap of the Grand Prix. And look at the overspeed we've got on Nicholas Latifi here. Straight at the inside of the Williams man. And we're up now into 17th place there. Just Matsushita in the back market car still in front of us there. He's still up in P14 off the start. But Jack Aitken and Kimi Raikkonen, F1's least and most experienced drivers, duking it out for two big names just behind Matsushita. More yellow flags. Who's it going to be dropping to the wayside this time then in this Grand Prix? And are we potentially going to see another safety car here? On the Baku City streets. I think it's one of the Mercs. We got a VSC this time round. Who is falling to the wayside? Is Esteban Ocon? What's happened there? Ocon? Hamilton's gone off as well. So I think Hamilton's retired from the Grand Prix. Ocon's been collected up in all of that. Latifi's jumped us under virtual safety car. I'm very, very confused what's happened there. But Hamilton out of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix and Latifi. With a cheeky overtake under virtual safety car as we had to avoid Ocon's stricken car reversing back out towards us. Well, it is green flag racing here once again from Baku. But in all of that, Latifi, rather fairly, has picked himself up a five-second penalty in this Grand Prix. So still not too sure what was going on there from young Nick. Or not really so young Nick, of course, now. He's been with Williams for a very, very long time and was never the youngest driver when he did finally make it to Formula 1 either. But uh, round in the final couple of corners there, I think Latifi just walloped the wall. There's a bit of juking out going on in front. I think someone's got some front wing damage here because everyone is gaining massively on each other. As we head back down towards the one, there's one car peeling off into the pit lane. That's Carlos Sainz in this Grand Prix, who's also got a five-second penalty. We're going to have a look past Latifi again, back down towards turn one there. Verstappen's going slowly as well. So Raikkonen, I think Raikkonen's just pulled off a double overtake in this Grand Prix there. And yeah, I've got no idea what's kicking off at the moment. Verstappen fights back. And puts himself back a bit of P10 of the Grand Prix. But really not too sure what's going on here at this stage of the day. Typical Baku carnage. But we're having to battle through the spray. Which certainly adds an extra element to it. Up the inside of Jack Aitken. We'll slot there. And we're definitely building up confidence in the car. Up into P13 now. Unlucky for some. Hopefully not ourselves in this Grand Prix. Matsushita up next. Getting a good run on Matsushita out of the final corner this time round. He's not going to get much slipstream from Kimi Raikkonen just in front of him there, but the Alfa Romeo's got some poke down the top end there. Back, gap back down to less than three tenths as we head down towards turn one. It's going to be a big old dive up the inside, and we do get it pulled up, and we do now move ourselves up at a P12 of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix here, so still making moves, still confident under braking. Team is saying it's meant to get a lot drier quite soon as well, so we'll see what we can pull off. Oh, we got one of the Alpha Towers into the pit lane a long way up the road there. Not too sure if that's Gasly or Kvyat in this Grand Prix. My guess is going to be Gasly. No, it is, in fact, Kvyat into the pit lane. So we're now up into P11 there. And now just one place outside of the points. A very, very early stop for the Alpha Tower. Obviously, you guys might remember back to last year. Alpha Tower threw away their first chance at a race victory in a long, long time here in Baku. 
but of course they did get they got a couple of dubs down in the latter stages of the year nonetheless but yeah we hopefully are going to be able to close it to Raikkonen maybe by the end of this lap Right, can we now get a run on Kimi Raikkonen as we head through the final couple of corners? Easy on the throttle as we head out of the final turn, but we should get a good run back down towards the start-finish line here. We're going to see the first Merck. That's George Russell, of course, into the pits because Hamilton out of the Grand Prix. But are we going to be able to get close enough to Kimi Raikkonen to go for a send back down towards turn one? Kimi just a little bit defensive. Not quite close enough this time round to go for anything, but we will gain even more on the exit of turn one here. We might be able to go for something back down in towards turn three. Let's just wait and see how we get on the power. Oh, a bit of wheel spin on the exit. We might have to wait another lap here. All over the back now of Kimi Raikkonen once again as we head in towards the final sector of the lap. Are we going to be able to try and get a run this time round on the Renault man? Let's just wait and see what we can do in towards the final couple of corners of the lap. Oh, big kick of oversteer on the exit of the final corner, but we do get the run still. Nudge the rear wheels on the wall as we've got a tiny bit of front wing damage on the other side at this stage of the day. Can we get a run on Raikkonen? That ran a really, really quick top end. Let's head back down towards turn one to the outside. Are we going to be able to hold it up around the outside of Kimi Raikkonen? Yes, we have. And we're now up at a P9 of the Grand Prix. Things that you love to see. Whoa! Back end! <laughs> back end getting a whole lot looser through those final couple of corners that time round. Getting a little bit worried about these tyres at this stage. Yeah, definitely providing a lot less grip than they once did in this Grand Prix. Cars getting a bit of a handful as the track starts to dry just a little bit. Can't get these tyres working the way you want, and that's what I mean. Running very, very deep through turn one. They actually get a huge punt from Raikkonen. I think that might have given the Finn some front wing damage in the Grand Prix. Not a lot we could have done there. As Kimi oh, really squeezes us out on the exit of the corner. Just to get the power down on the exit of the turn there. But look at Raikkonen, and he's got a big old run on us. Let's head down in towards the next corner of the lap. What are we going to see from the Finn this time around there? He again gives us a big old squeeze. Oh, come on, what is the back end doing in this thing? We better not have overheated the tyres like we did last time out in Monaco because trying to cool them back down here might be a lot more difficult. Still side by side with Raikkonen as we head down through sector two there is what is that from Kimi? Just completely came across me there. We have to take evasive action in that situation there. Jack Aiken I think wallops the wall in all of that commotion as what is going on in this Azerbaijan Grand Prix here really now starting to struggle with the grip and the tyres as we head down in towards turn eight once more. Trying to just dance the car through there. Raikkonen still definitely struggling on that. Yeah, it must obviously be orange or red front wing damage for the Renault man there. As we try and head out of the next couple of corners. Oh, still everywhere. This thing twitching around at this stage of the day. Very feels like a sudden change in the car, of course, before the front wing damage even became a factor in this race. Only a light nudge on the wall, but the team now saying it might be ready to come into the pits at the end of this lap. We'll see if we can get a good run, though. Out of the final couple of corners. Obviously, Danny Kvyat's already pit once in this Grand Prix. Oh, we nudged the wall again. That's going to give us a little bit of front wing damage as we head out of the final corner here. But are we going to be able to go for anything on Raikkonen as we head back down into our wall to turn one here? Oh, Raikkonen! I completely thought he wouldn't bail out there in that situation. We probably, if this was real Formula 1, would have picked up a penalty in at that moment there, but we do get back up the inside of Danny Kvyat as well as we head back down towards turn one here, but it's carnage here in back all of a sudden. Even more front wing damage. That is exactly what you love to see in this race. It's all going a bit pear-shaped at this stage of the day. Kvyat gets a big run on us as we head out of the next couple of corners here. We don't want to get stuck behind the Alpha Tauri, but Kvyat completely just blocks us in towards the next corner there, and this is going from bad to worse. We've got a safety car now as we've been clattered by one of the Williams. This is just carnage. A five-second penalty for a collision with Giovinazzi. What on earth could we do in that situation? We're getting ping-ponged around by other cars. I am lost for words as again. Everyone breaking so, so early into the corners. Giovinazzi can't surely be having that. This has become a bit of a disaster all of a sudden. Right, now we begin to let the dust settle in what was a chaotic couple of laps 
in this Azerbaijan Grand Prix. We've got no front wing. I've got to remember we've got no front wing in this race. That was almost the wheel completely ripped off at this stage of the day. Things, yeah, just going from bad to worse here in Baku. I guess the only saving grace is the fact that obviously we've got a safety car, so we're not going to lose out on as much as everyone, I'm sure, is going to dive into the pit lane at this stage of the day. No doubt the lap times are falling off, Jeff. Of course they are. We have got no front wing. We've also got a safety car. Can we get the nose rotated through? Oh, ho, ho. This is just going from bad to worse at this stage of the day. We're definitely going to have to dive into the pit lane. At, well, I mean, we had to anyway, of course, for the strategy, but with this safety car as well. In towards the pit lane. Might have left that a bit late. Oh, come on. Keep it in one piece. This is not quite what you need. Giovinazzi. Hey, Jordan King even. It's just jumped us heading into the pit lane. This is an absolute disaster. How not to do the Azerbaijan Grand Prix at this stage. I've got no idea what is kicking off there. The team have luckily let Charles go before we even get to the box. But it's going to be a very, very long hold in the pit lane here. As yeah, this Azerbaijan Grand Prix not going our way. How long is this stop going to be then? Has anyone got the front wing ready? It's going to be a whopping... 16 seconds as we get jumped by one of the Williams as well. What a disaster. Oh my god. Are you alright? Engine off, engine off. What even happened there? What on earth has just gone on with the car? through the final chicane of the lap there. As you can just see, heading through, take a nice amount of curb on the inside. I think the back end got loose, and you just see it kicks the back end out. We tried to get on the power to straighten it up a bit on opposite lock. And under safety car, we have dropped out of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix here. We have done a Roman Grosjean in this race. Like I said, let's just watch this again as we head through. You can see, we do we nudge the wall on the inside? Is that what loosens the car? We must have got very, very close there. But I think as we come off the kerb, the back end grounds out there. You can already see trying to kick the back end with the oversteer there. Try and get it back the right way around there as we head through the next corner. Obviously, we've got to get the car pointed in for the final turn. Otherwise, we're heading to the wall already as we head through the final corner here of the lap. Try just to straighten it back up on the throttle on the exit there. But of course, with it being wet conditions... Just completely drop the back end, and as soon as we realise it's going around the other way, nothing we can do here in the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And that is one of the worst DNFs I think I've had on F1 2020 up to this point on the game there. That is... I mean, we're a four-time world champion. We should not be doing that on F1 2020 here. Let's just run on board one final time with that at full speed for you guys as well there. Because that... I mean, I I just don't know. Let's try it on board quickly. You just see, I think I think we do nudge the wall. Back end kicks round. You hear all the wheel spin as well. And that's us out of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix there. What a disappointing end to the weekend there. It was always going to be tough starting from the back. It was always going to be tough with the wet conditions. But like I said, I thought we could score some points in this Grand Prix here. But that us out here in Baku. A nearly flawless performance here then, and a commanding victory. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, keeping their tyre temperatures up in the tricky wet conditions was really important. There's not much grip out there at the best of times, and it's ten times worse if you're out there on cold tyres. So the way they kept the rubber in its proper operating window was a huge advantage today. The faces on our top three look so incredibly happy as they make their way up to the podium. A much-deserved victory and a brilliant performance from them all.
And after this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. That's a positive result for George Russell, who further solidifies his position at the top of the standings. Some amazing talent out on the track today, but Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? It's time to check out the constructors' standings. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. There was also a strong showing from the McLaren team today as they make their way up the standings. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action. I can't wait to see what's next. Well, I'm completely lost for words at the end of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And I'm sorry to you guys as well for missing out on what could have been a cracking second half to that race there. But I mean, Charles Leclerc somehow walks away with his first win of the year there and the first win for the team as well. They're a brilliant job done by our teammate in the end. They're finishing ahead of Pierre Gasly and George Russell there. At least that's a, a promising sign of the upgrades we've put on the car as well. There are five different cars from five different teams make up your top five in the end. There was Stroll, Perez rounding out that little group. Kvyat, Albon, Verstappen, Norris and Guan Yu Zhou round out your points finishes there. And then you can see Jack Aitken, Raikkonen, Sainz, Latifi, both Alfa Romeos, Ocon, Magnus and Giovinazzi with myself, Hamilton and Nick DeFries all not making it to the check of the flag. They're a very disappointing end to the race here today. Championship-wise, though, it means Gasly gets back ahead of us there. Charles Leclerc leapfrogs his way all the way up to P4, though, of the World Championship. So that's very, very good for our constructor standings as well there. Russell, though, 29 points clear at the top. Two points between myself and Gasly. Ocon all the way down to P7. Perez gets the jump on Lando and Hamilton there. As, yeah, George Russell leads the championship. Hamilton down in 10th place after the opening few races of the year there. Jack Aitken jumps Raikkonen with his second F1 point there. Not too sure he's done that because Raikkonen still should have it on count back. Uh, Matsushita, though, gets the jump on his teammate Jordan King as well in the Battle of the Alfa Romeos there. And constructors-wise, six points back from Mercedes after Charles Leclerc's first win of the year there. We've now got two wins for the team as well. Exactly what you like to see there. Alpha Tauri just 17 points off the top there. Red Bull and Racing Point tied. McLaren get the jump on Renault as well as Ferrari still sat in no man's land at this stage of the year there. But thank you all so much for watching this video nonetheless. Like I said, I'm so, so sorry. I don't know how I managed to make that mistake. A rookie error from myself at the end of the Grand Prix there. But we'll definitely come back stronger next time out. I think we head to France uh, for the next Grand Prix of the season. So make sure you're back ready for that one. You guys do not want to miss it. A big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.